but sometimes it takes a minute. Not yet, so you want Oh, now, now we're live, now we're live. Okay, great, great, fantastic. So, just, I'm gonna refresh so I can see the comments. And we can ask if people have questions. So people are watching and like, so see the video in there. I think we're live, yes. We're live, hi. Yeah, we're live. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Dr. Araya. <laughs> I'm your rapid transformational areas of parent coaching and relationship and I have only one mission and that is to empower to live your authentic self and all put ease grace and joy abundance today we're going to talk about the perfect person to about it Stacy Stacy thank you so much for accepting my invitation and coming live show today introduce yourself tell us about your personal journey how you awaken to your uh, authentic self to your, I have got the first comment. Hi, Amanda. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your personal journey, and um, we can go from there. Oh, cool. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Stacy Mihas Lewanski. You can find me. Um, I'm Stacy with an I, E-Y-E. -E, and I came up with that name through intuition um, and guidance. And I always had to spell my name because it's S-T-A-C-I. And now when I spell my name or I think of myself, I think of the I being the inner I, looking at my world and my lens from within. So I'll tell you a little bit about my background. I am, um, I've been in network marketing since 2007. So right after I had my son, I didn't want to go back to work and I just wanted to be with my kid. And so um, it worked perfectly. If you know anything about network marketing, you're able to you know, work your own hours, be your own boss, hire your people, build this as a six figure business. You could make it as big as you know, a, a, a corporate job. So I took it all the way and um, I'm still involved, but not as much. And um, so I was a coach. I was a coach for 250 women all over the world. And I was also a coach for the leaders within the organization. I was asked to be, you know, a speaker, a motivational speaker, um, host workshops, and I specialized in coaching. And what I was, why I was a pretty good coach, I would say, was because I didn't really care about the sales. I cared about the person. So it was a natural thing for me to care about people, get deep with people. So, if, you know, if my job and, and you know how business jobs are, it's like you have to produce. There has to be a goal. And you have to hit the goals. And so um, what I found was when you connect deeply with somebody first um, and they feel seen and heard, they're, they're more likely to follow through and, and to, to actually produce and do things. And so I led from the heart. I led from a deep place of knowing um, when some other coaches would be in the industry and be like, what are you doing to motivate? Like these people are motivated or what do I do to motivate? And it would always be, my advice would always be to connect deeply. And so I, I would connect with the leaders. The leaders would come to me. And so I was really good with the leaders because they were the people supporting all these beautiful people. And they were so good at what they did in sales. But what I was good at was supporting people. Yeah. So then, yeah. So when you brought up like when you focus on people, I'm like, ah, oh, that's the purpose, right? We want to have more connection. It's all about service, and of course, we want to make money. We want to, you know, run a business, but that is just a tool. the The vision, the mission, is the people, is the connection, is service, right? This connectedness. I love that. I was like, oh, you know, it gave me like such moving. a relief. It, but here's the thing, though, the whole time that I was doing it, so 2007, it's 2021 now, it, there was always a little quieter voice that this isn't it. And, I, and it never gave up on me. And I used to look at everybody that was my friends in the company and be like, I want to be, like, I ran a successful business. I mean, we, our volume each year was astronomical, but um, they were hitting other accolades and things like that. And, and they were wondering, well, why don't you want to go this way, even higher with this company? And I, and I, it was because a voice within me said, this isn't it. Yeah. And it never, ever gave up. 
And so I went on a journey to find what, what is that voice? What is this? Why can't I be happy where I'm at? We're at a company where it's recognition, bonuses, money, free time, accolades, dressing up, girly, motherly, everything. And it wasn't enough. And so then I began my journey um, with, and then I had my daughter um, who is now 10. So I began the journey of finding out who I am. And I stumbled upon Super Soul Sunday, as many of us have, and saw so I, I just became in awe of these wisdom teachers. And I've always been a fan of Oprah. And then I saw Dr. Shivali Sabari, and she blew my mind. I knew truth when I heard it. And she was all about the kids and the parent being the one that's really responsible for the, for the awakening. And it wasn't about the disciplining of the child. And so then I began following her and her path and her community. And I took these courses for years, for two years straight with Shivali. And I was very open about my unfolding. And Shivali did pay good attention to that. And she did like me and, and saw that what I was, uh, as I was unfolding, she kind of was there. And she sort of gave me the, the green light to go full force, full fledged, all in with my mission to help people to speak publicly, to be a motivational speaker. And um, so then I, you know, began shifting my life and it took me a while. And then in the last year, I transitioned from a business coach to a transformative and embodiment coach. And I have some really next level uh, programs that I've come up with to help support people. I love that. I also love that. So I just love these journeys. When I first question that comes up, the first question, talk about your always about, okay, this was not enough. I checked all the check boxes. They're not fulfilling, <laughs> right? And then you start being, open you just we just question okay this is not it because the same right i was an engineer resign i'm like oh, i don't want to do this doesn't yeah. seem right but i didn't know what to do right like you probably so you could yeah. you've been I'm a recipient of the universe knowledge and you it just fell on your lap right it's it feels yes. good yeah. it feels true love that yes. love that yes Dive into the abundance, and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then uh, let's go from there. And hopefully, our audience will uh, will take. Well, look at that, Sarah, Beth, hi, Nafshin, Annie. Uh, they're all here. They're saying hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you for hi, watching. Hi, everybody. So, yes, abundance. Talk about abundance. Abundance, um, in your opinion, right? Yeah. From my, from my. Don't tell you what is, yes. my opinion. Yeah, in my and then where where do we find it, right? Where 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 do we find abundance? Should, is it something that we have to find? Yeah, I love abundance. I love this topic. Um, and what I can say about abundance is, from my own direct experience and from all the great wisdom teachers out there, that uh, abundance is truly who we are. We are mm -hmm. abundance, right? Mm -hmm. So ultimately, that's our true nature. And what covers that abundance is layers upon layers of conditioning, shoulds, fears, limitation, childhood wounds, um, different circumstances that, that severed us from this abundance, this light, this limitlessness. But as children, do you remember as a child, we had this. We used to play and not think about the bills or how the light is going to be paid in the house or if I have to be at work by six or, you know, anything. We were just free and living and doing our beautiful thing until one day this thing called responsibility came in and being a human came in and we had to um, kind of conform and limit ourselves and kind of shrink. And so the, the, the journey back to abundance is really just, um, it, it becomes revealed to you again. And I'm gonna share different ways that you can, you can tap back into who you truly are. But um, one of the ways is to remember the times that you were so abundant. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of can move you smoothly into what I mean by the word abundance. And so, um, 
abundance. And so for anybody listening to this, and you could think about your own experiences in your life, and then you could kind of allow what I'm saying to settle sort of into your heart and, and, and remember how beautiful your life really is. You know, if you were terminally ill, your awareness would completely shift from the busy do 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 to the very present moment that's in front of you and cherishing, you know, every breath you take and every human being that came into your presence or looking at your house with new eyes. And for some reason, I have this sort of awareness that life is very precious. And all the people who have died before me that I loved so much really impacted my life. And when I cried and was in grief over their death, I didn't want it to be for nothing. I wanted it to be, have meaning in my life. And so if I could learn from anybody that has died unexpectedly, or I know of a, um, one of my friends from back in the day, her baby passed away. I went to that funeral. I've been to a million funerals. I, my grandfather passed away, my grandma, my, my, my closest grandma, my, my other grandfather, you know, people I've loved, I've lost friends. And, you know, I really, really take life seriously and not so seriously. I really know that because some people have died at the age of one and some people have died at 14 and some died at 21 and some died at 29 and some died at 65. Then I had a grandmother died at 84 you don't know when your last day will be. And so it's precious. And then just having this sense of aliveness within us, just being able to breathe every day. What is helping us to breathe, guys? What is the life force that's the breathing or the being alive? And we forgot about this because we were just doing our robotic thing day in and day out and going for the, we, we, that we collectively came up with these success factors of what it means to be a, a success in life. Anybody that's not abiding by that is a lower class, somebody that's not considered in the mix, they won't get the benefits and they won't, um, they don't have the opportunities. Yeah. And then there's the elite, the people that are in, um, they have so much and, and, and we constantly keep rewarding it in this collective system. You get rewarded for working harder. You get rewarded for becoming a robot at work. You become rewarded for the carrots that people can dangle in front of you. And then you become this thing that's always searching. And so abundance is the opposite of that. Abundance is where you already are that within because you were born with infinite possibility. Mm -hmm. but we had this lens that could only see this 3D, three-dimensional, I work nine to five, I have these kids, I'm busy, um, I got to fix my tire and go to work in the morning, make dinner and um, do the same old thing every day in and day out. And so we get caught up in that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but we forget about this aliveness until somebody does die or until we get a diagnosis and I don't, and I had, we've had in my neighborhood, so many diagnoses, so diagnosing, so much cancer, so much that it just really affected me. Mm -hmm. It really, it viscerally almost shut me down. Like, how could this be that like this family experiences this and this exp family experiences this, like, what is life about? Mm -hmm. What is life really about? Is it about the dangling carrots and working your ass off 90 hours a week to get a paycheck and never see your family and neglect yourself and your health, you know, and, um, or the way my parents did it or the way their parents did it or the way the generations did it of constant worry and anxiety. Is that the way to live, you know, and then just it's far and few between that you see these enlightened people, these enlightened masters, the Muji and the uh, Eckhart. I mean, are they doing it the right way? Like, what is what this 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 level of consciousness and this level of consciousness are the farthest extremes? So I had to do this on my own and through Shivali and step by step and meditation and slowing down and getting rid of things that no longer serve my life. That's an easy way. So if something is boggling you in your house, in your body, in your life, 
If you want to know what abundance is, get rid of those things that weigh something on you. Do an experiment with yourself for one week and give it up and see what remains. Give it all up and see what remains. Yeah. So abundance is knowing that you can shift your lens, knowing that in any given moment, you could have gloom and doom coming at your face, thoughts, ideas, uh, feelings, a rush feeling, your nervous system's heightened. You can, you actually have the power to switch that lens to the present moment. And that's a skill. That's yeah. a skill that takes everything. Yes. That's the meditation. Abundance is seeking so what help. I'm, yeah. So what I'm hearing from you, abundance is knowing we have a choice. Right? Ultimately, we it's have a possibility. Choice. That's it. Yeah. Coming from fear to love, coming from worry to compassion to gratitude to peace, right? I love that. So what I, one of the things that I do in order to cultivate that, and by the way, when I said, I want to give you my definition, my definition is exactly the same, that we are abundance, as you said, like God is abundance, right? Love is abundance. Money is abundance. Like we are love. We are money. We are, we are, we are every, like everything. We are all abundance. And so one of the tools that I, um, I use myself to make voice intentionally every morning, I literally put my hands on my heart and I feel, feel the blank. I feel grateful. And then I really, it's not like a bullet list, but I really feel the gratitude. For example, I, I used to, you know, crave to live in America when I was a teenager, right? Every morning after 24 years of being here, every morning well, in the past six years when I woke up, not before that, because before that I took it for granted, but in the past six years, every morning I try to remember I am here. I'm not living back home. I'm not under oppression anymore. I'm not under a tyrannical regime. I'm not living there. And I'm not like, I, I used, I, I went to Canada, but I still love to use to America. And I still feel that feeling that I wanted to go back and I had to leave my family so I, every morning I try to remember that I really feel grateful for it really cultivate that gratitude and sometimes even what if I didn't have my right hand and I do have my right hand let me just kiss it and love it and be grateful for it what are your some some of your tools that you, you know you offer your clients what are those specific step-by-step -step? because human brain likes steps and systems and you know tools yeah. What do you have? Um, what is your best tool to cultivate abundance throughout the day? Um, I would say paying attention to your life without judgment mm -hmm. is the most important thing to cultivate into your life to receive abundance. When you take a minute to pause on your life, that means that you honor yourself, you honor your life. So when something arises within you that triggers you, when it triggers you, this is the most important thing that I teach. So I know that there's a lot of different ways to go, but this is what I teach. As soon as something arises in your awareness that drives you crazy, or it has been a pattern of yours, when you press pause on your life, you are transforming your reality just by pressing pause and shining the light of pure awareness. So the abundance that you are, you're looking at this particular thing with no judgment. Mm -hmm. is what it is. This is a pattern of mine. This is what I do every single day. Every morning that I get my kids ready for school, I'm yelling at them. This is a pattern and I'm sick of it. And then I feel guilty after I drop off or whatever it is. I know that's a lot, a big one for moms and, it, and pressing pause and showing the world and showing your love for yourself has such a beautiful ripple effect on this particular situation and everybody surrounding that situation. It's the, most it's the most important critical thing you could do to change your dynamic because without that pattern, without those conditions, you are perfect. You are perfect as is. You are perfect as is, you are abundant, you are gratitude, you are everything good. All, it, all that's blocking that beautiful flow of being in the precious moment every single morning. So intentionally taking the time in the morning is gorgeous, but you could live every single moment of your entire existence like that. It's just pressing pause. 
and looking at the things, but here's some other things. And these are things that you can cultivate in your life in a new way. I know that other people have steps like step one, meditate, step two, intention, step three, gratitude journal, step four, coffee. I do that, but this, what I'm about to spill right here is the transformation, okay? Number one, know that you can shift your lens. Number two, seek help. Number three, try something new. Number four, listen and obey the inner voice. Listen and obey your inner voice. Number five, look at your childhood wounds. Number six, quit your job or say no to an opportunity because it just doesn't align. Number seven, trust the universe. Trust God. Trust yourself. You're alive for a reason. When it's time to go, it's time to go. You know that. People have died unexpectedly in life. You know that there's just no rhyme or reason to it. Number eight, collaborate. Collaborate with people who have like-minded and same heart as you and collaborate with people that don't. Say what, how you feel out loud. Get it out of your body. Tell somebody you trust how you feel. Number 10, dance. Dance even when no one else is. Dance with your friends. Get on a Zoom and dance. Number 11, don't look at anybody else but yourself. Look at yourself as the creator of your entire universe. Number 12, go face to face with your biggest fears or obstacles. Look at them with no judgment. You can do it. Number 13, let go and don't give one F. Don't give one F. Try it. Number 14, see that carrots in a job that they're dangling in front of you could be a programming to keep you stuck and keep you robotic. Pay attention. Number 15, listen to somebody else's opposing view. Try something new. Don't think you're the only one that's right. You're not. And number 16, and the last thing I'll leave you with is let your hair down, put on your lipstick, and be your authentic embodied self. Perfect. You have every right to be yourself. Whoever told you to dim your light, whoever forced you to dim your light in childhood didn't know any better. When you shine your light brightly, you impact people beyond measure. Be you fully. Those are just some of the things that I do and I work with my uh, people in my program for 12 solid weeks of honing in on these beautiful things that release the pressure and the backpack off of you. So it's so easy. It's so easy to flow with life when you don't have this bullshit on your back. And so that's where I really lead from. I lead from genuine transformation of things that no longer serve. So you can serve and be open, an open vessel to divine guidance and it takes a muscle of present moment awareness that I really focus on. That's like, I'm like the Jillian Michaels of the conscious turning the helm from hell to hello, from <laughs> trigger to here I am in the present moment. If you can, if you can keep turning the helm to the present moment, and I, that's what I specialize in, that's what I'm an expert in, because I've done it for myself since January of 2017. I'm not perfect, but I meditate every single day since then. And my divine practice, my committed practice is to turn the helm, especially in 2021. As soon as the trouble arises, I pause and I go to the present moment before I even dive into the trouble. I focus more on presence than the trouble. Yes. And then when I have to address the trouble, I come from a higher ground. Love that, love that. So scientifically, this is, um, so when we are triggered, uh, when you're saying, um, when, the, when there's a trouble, when you're triggered, the fight or flight, the primitive part of the brain gets activated. And that's the time that the higher brain, which is the, the prefrontal cortex, pause and work it, yes, Sarah, uh, that will get shut down. So that's why you create that pause, taking deep breaths, going to your meditation cushion. Just, I say just go walk around the block just to cool yourself down because in the moment, everything is life or death. Everything is dramatic. So we sometimes, we, like after an hour, say, why did I get mad? I don't remember. What was the, what was the origin? <laughs> so by taking that pause, as you said, we reactivate the smart brain or the higher brain. And then we kind of put that, that uh, you know, the primitive brain back uh, where it belongs quietness because there's no real danger out there 
there's no danger. It's just doing its job. I honor it for what it's done and how it served me, but it no longer serves unless I want to use it as a tool. Yeah. Exactly. So I usually just suggest to co communicate with it. Say, thank you. Thank you for serving me. I no longer need it. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> let me let me be the adult. I don't want to be the three year old, right? The four year old me. Love that. Absolutely love that. So, I, and the only thing that, you know, when I started uh, working, um, on abundance because my both my parents were employees and I was an employee until six years ago. So we had this, uh, I used to have, and I still do a little bit, this fixed mindset about money, you know, income, as you said, Jay, quit your job. <laughs> I love that, quit your job. Uh, that's what I did, right? So, um, but we have this fixed mindset um, about money and money is just kind of EQ, you know, I, I took this course, um, EQ, and I loved it, money EQ, and it was like, go bring your wallet and take your money out and really appreciate it and talk to them, like, what? Do I touch <laughs> money? I don't like to touch money, money is dirty, you know, that's my thing that has been implanted in my brain, right? Not so, um, yes, yes, money so, is evil, yeah, exactly and you know you become stingy or you're in vain and all that. and i still have that i still work on it every day and i have a lot of work to do still mm -hmm. uh, but um one of the things that started me going with this abundance i remember six years ago when i was taking all these coaching um programs was this when we look at the world everything and look at the tree how many leaves does it have look at the sand how many sand? look at ourselves look at our like our hair everything is abundant but for some reason we think we're in lack oh there's not enough money there's not enough i can't do this but when we are realistic right we know that we are abundance right and abundance is our true nature because yes. abundance uh another definition that i absolutely love abundance is joy when we are joyful, when we are in the present moment, that's the time that our vibration is high. And because our inherent nature is abundant, then the money will come. That's right. You know, the opportunities will pour in. So money, abundance is joy. So if yeah. you want to be abundant, we need to be joyful. We need to be joyful. Need to... So anyways, this was, this was fabulous. Is there Thank anything you. else you want? You want to talk about your class where people can find it? You can leave a comment uh, with a link to your class, the upcoming class. I know that the previous one was a, was fabulous. You had yeah. so many beautiful testimonials. It was such, it was creating a buzz, right, on Facebook. I loved it. Yeah. So tell us about that and if there's anything, um, you know, you want to add. Yeah, um, I would say that, you know, the last thing I'd like to say about abundance is that really when that is your true nature. So uh, the only thing that's blocking it are, like we said, these conditions, these fixed beliefs, these things that constrict us. And so the first step is just paying attention, being in awareness of your life and seeing where the abundance is. Like you said, the tree does its thing and nature does its thing. And it's so beautiful and mystical or, you know, an animal, a dog, a cat, a baby, you know, all these just mystical things about life, the aliveness within us, the breath, and just taking a moment to remember these sacred, beautiful things is, is key. And knowing that we are infinite possibility. And the only thing that blocks us are these thoughts that tell us otherwise. And so if we begin to look at these thoughts are, as just these energies that rise and fall, rise and fall, but we're still here. But see, the awareness is always present. And so as the awareness, which could be linked right to abundance, awareness and abundance are actually the same thing yes. because that's who we are. And so when we have this pure lens of awareness, we're able to see the abundance in everything, even in the worst situations, knowing that life is so precious. It's so sacred. It's so beautiful. And so um, getting rid of some things, making the space within you really makes a difference with being able to even just sit in nature for a second, even though you know that's something simple to do. A lot of people get paralyzed because they have so much weight within them that's holding them back from even stepping outside or going towards anything that's, not, that's towards wellness. So giving up one thing or just maybe cleaning out a drawer in your house or making some sort of commitment just to make your bed. I know it sounds silly, but it's an intentional energetic thing that you're saying I'm here to commit to awareness and abundance and I'm curious. All you ever have to be is curious. Yeah. You don't have to do anything else, but be curious and the universe will give you step-by-step. Step. So some of the course that I'm providing can, can help you. 
Um, I did a course on intuition and I recorded it, but I didn't post it yet. But I think I'm going to do another one because people are really fascinated by their gut instinct and to see if it's real and to experiment with it. And that's one of my favorite things. So that'll be coming soon. I have another course called Wire for Wellness. And I'm working with this very dynamite woman who is a PA and um, she is also trained in mindfulness and I'm a coach, she's a coach as well. And so we've co collaborated so we can go eight weeks and rewire the old noggin and get you to a place of peace mm -hmm. and present moment awareness and holding accountability for that. So that's called Wire for Wellness. I'll put that link below. That's eight weeks. This is all in. So when you're a part of my courses, it's like you have to be ready to make a change. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next thing that I'm hosting is called the Inner Sangha. And that's a 12 week transformative experience for people who want to have support in their life on this path of what we just explained about abundance, about looking at patterns, about looking at your everyday life, not some future plan, looking at your everyday life with a new set of eyes and having a support system that's gonna guide you every way through. And it's an experience course, so you learn a lesson you experience it in the moment. We do some creative stuff. We move our bodies a little bit. And then for that week, we focus and hone in on that concept to integrate it into our life. So I'm all about integration work. Yes. I'm not about learning. I, I teach very well, but it's also about holding your hand through the integration is the most embodiment. That's why you're an embodiment coach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a full embodiment coach, meaning you may be the greatest coach in the world, but who takes care of you? And at the end of the day, if there's ever a kink in your road, if you haven't been able to get the clients that you want, if you have not launched your masterpiece yet, or if you don't know what your purpose is, it's because there's a kink in the hose. And I'm a, I'm, I like to help clear energy. That's what I do. So that's called the Inner Sangha. And that begins on February 18th. That's all in. I'm going to place that below. And Wire for Wellness begins in March. I do do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but that, you know, it's, I've been doing that for so long that it's, it's, um, it's very transformative to work one-on-one, -on -one, but to be in a group kills a lot more birds with one stone because then you're integrating with people and you're hearing their life experience and you're not comparing yourself to me and you're listening to everybody in the mix going, we go through the exact same thing and it's just. Yeah, it's very, I love that. I love group coaching as well. Love it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a while since we've chatted and I'm Thank you. so grateful. I know you remember the first time we saw each other in a taxi in an Uber going to evolve the first time oh, from, we to a from the airport and ride and went for hours. And I was saying, I oh, the wrong button on Uber. That's fine. Cause we ended up talking and bonding and it was just so beautiful. I know. I like, I think it was the beginning of Uber, right? We had no idea what we were doing. Probably. Literally. No, literally had no clue. <laughs> We're just driving around yeah. the city of and going, woo, yes. <laughs> it was so lovely. I'm so blessed to know you, Stacey. I'm delightful. I love you. I love you too. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you.